Welcome to the second video in the series. This time we're going to take a look at an example of uh, transparent polymers. So we're back in the analysis tab. Uh, and I have a data file on uh, paraline, which we uh, deposit in our paraline coder. So this is paraline on silicon. I'll go back to just look at the uh, look at the psi data, and I'll start to build my model. So the first thing I'm going to put down, of course, is the substrate, and this is deposited on silicon. So we're just going to put down silicon. Then on top of that, I'll go ahead and throw in a uh, I'll throw in a native oxide layer. I'll set it to 1.5. I'm not going to fit it. And then I'll go ahead and add, on top of that, uh, a Cauchy layer. Now this looks this looks transparent. It's got these nice periodic uh, interference peaks. And now my guess is, in theory, this material should be about 1.5 microns, so I'm going to set it to something like that, uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll try and fit. I'll try and fit these values and see what I get. Okay, so it's a pretty terrible fit. What I'm going to try and do first is just work with one wavelength at a time, and if I just roll this up a little bit, try and get this to fit. Closer to where I think, closer to where I think the thickness is, and then change the index a little bit. We're getting a little bit closer. I'll match that one, and then I'll go ahead and fit this, fit these three, and see what I get. Okay, so I don't exactly get a very good fit. Doesn't really match at all. Even though my thickness is roughly what I guess it to be, um, these don't seem to be accurate. Let's try and add the C and see if the C improves it. C improves it a little bit. Uh, it does go negative, though. Let's take a look and see if there are some other things that improve this. So we could try roughness, see if roughness helps a little bit. Uh, well, we get a negative roughness, so that's, that's not possible, so I'm going to undo that. And this is going negative, so I'm just, I'm just going to make it zero. I'm not going to fit it. And it'll take us back to fit like this. Now, you notice I got a totally different answer this time. Uh, that means, you know, there's a lot of combinations of these two values which can give us something that it thinks is close enough. But you can see the error in this fit is very large. So this is pretty unreasonable. I'll set it back to 15. I'll set this... I'll set this to like 1.3, I think, or something it was coming out to, and uh, try to try to fit it again, see roughly what we get. All right, well, we're not really getting anywhere with that. I'm going to go ahead and set some logical limits on this. I think this really shouldn't be anything lower than this, uh, or rather, I'll set it to I'll set it to 1400, and I'll set a, a a nice reasonable range for it. I think maybe 1200 to 16. 100 sounds reasonable. I'll go ahead and try and fit it. Okay, so this is obviously wrong as well. Now, you can see what's wrong here is that A has got to be too big because these peaks are really, really large. So if I step A back, these will start to get more reasonable. Something like... Maybe something like that. And this is probably a little bit smaller. Something like that seems reasonable. And we'll move this up to like 14. And move this up a little bit higher. Okay, that's, yeah, that's seeming a little bit more... A little bit more reasonable. Okay. Alright, yeah, so right, right around there is starting to seem a little bit more... A little more logical. Let's see if we fit this. What we get? Okay. This makes a little bit more sense now. 
Let's try roughness again. See what we get from roughness. Nope, same kind of thing. Turn roughness off. I'll just reset to the last fit. 365. Fit it. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'll go to other options. See, I'll try this alternate models again. And what does it tell me? Well, okay, it says this is about the best you're going to get. So I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to include um, anything else right now. Now, at this point, I'm going to take a look at something that I might suspect because this is a polymer, and as I'm going to, I'm going to go look at depolarization data. And as we see, there is this sort of periodic depolarization that's decently common in polymers, especially when they have, uh, especially when they have an isotropy. So even though it's suggested that an isotropy was not that good of an improvement, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say convert to an isotropic. And I convert to this thing, which is basically uh, two separate Cauchy layers, where one is through the plane and the other one is through the thickness. So this is to say that the properties, the optical properties, are different depending on the direction in which the light propagates through the material. So now that I have this set up, I'm looking at I'm looking at a depolarization. I'm going to go ahead and fit this. Oh, go back to psi. Uh, I th I think this is probably larger than this. Psi and difference mode. No, nope, we don't need that. And I'll fit one of these angles, which suggests that there is a separate separation angle between. Uh, the the directionality at which it of which the properties of the material optically are dependent on the direction in which it propagates. So now that I fit that, I've got something that makes a lot more sense. But I still have this depolarization data that I can take into account. So if I go to other options, configure options, and then select include depolarization data. Now if I go to fit options, I should have the ability to say, yes, I'd like to include depolarization. And I can fit. Okay, so that makes it a little bit better. It's still not, it's still not exactly great. Now I'll go ahead and I'll introduce the C values. And this should not be negative anymore. This is negative. I'm just going to go ahead and set it to zero. And I'm not going to fit it. All right. So now that I've done that, now that I've taken the depolarization information into account, uh, I've been able to get this substantially lower error than I've had before, and I have a fit that starts to look pretty reasonable. So maybe we'll try roughness again. Put in zero. Fit for roughness. Doesn't really do anything, so I'll go ahead and turn it off. And um, maybe I'll try to fit the other angle to see if that has an effect. Well, it doesn't really do anything, so I'll set it back to zero. And I'll unfit it. And I'll go ahead and hit fit. OK. So now I'll just apply this to uh, all of the angles. Hit OK. And we'll fit it to everything here. And we start to have a fit, which is pretty reasonable. We zoom in, and we can start to see where the fit fails. And we can see that where these peaks are, where they line up, is, is pretty close. It starts to kind of get worse, a little bit worse down here, but still they are lined up vertically. So perhaps there's a slight, we're slightly off as far as the optical properties are concerned. But as far as thickness goes, this is probably, it's probably uh, decently accurate. One last time, I'm just going to go ahead and try uh, try alternate models and see what it suggests to me. It suggests an isotropy, which is what we're doing. We're not going to apply that then because it's already being applied. We have these. We also we may be having some absorption in the low region. We could try to employ these Erbach absorption parameters. Now, what these are is they're basically if we look at the optical constants. Uh, what they basically do is you can see we have an n ordinary and an n extraordinary, 
uh, those are two separate indices of refraction for the different layers, for the EX and the EZ. Uh, and you'll see that K, the K values are zero, as they should be because we're using a Cauchy equation where it's assumed to be zero. What the absorption parameters here do is they assume that there's a little bit of absorption just beyond this wavelength. Somewhere deeper in the UV, there's a little bit of absorption that starts to you know, give us a, an absorption tail right near the bottom. So typically, if I just fit this exponent and this amplitude, exponent and amplitude, it might give us a slight improvement. It didn't. It doesn't really think that that's a thing. So eh, we can go ahead and get, yeah, these, these numbers didn't change. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them because they didn't really do anything. So that was just kind of one last thing that we could have tried. But this is all in all a, a pretty good result, and it's, it's pretty reasonable. Okay. So the key there was that we basically looked, we saw that we had depolarization, and we took the depolarization uh, into account by going to fit options and including it. Uh, another thing we might see in a polymer like this, because of simply because of its of how it was deposited, is we might see some uh, thickness non-uniformity. So I'll include that in the model as well. Thickness non-uniformity, uh, and I do that by going to model options, model calculation, selecting ideal, and then we can deviate from ideal, and we can say, you know what? Why don't you tell us how much non-uniformity you think there is? And we'll go ahead and fit it. We were like 21 before or 24 before was the quality of our fit. And we went from 24 to 16, and it thinks just, you know, just a little bit under 2% thickness non-uniformity explains this quite a bit. Uh, and when it does that, it's also able to try and fit this depolarization data. So that gives us a much better fit. If we zoom into where this was kind of falling apart, we might see that these kind of go up into these peaks a little bit better. But you'll notice, if we look at our thickness, it didn't change much. It changed by maybe a, a, a few nanometers. Um, but for a film of this size, that's really not, not significant. OK, so the next, next example I'm going to do is an example of a photoresist S1805 spun on a sputtered tungsten surface. So I opened up a new data file, and here it is. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and clear this model. And I'll start to uh, build a model for this. So my substrate is not silicon. It's tungsten. So I'm going to go down and see if they have tungsten. And, and we do. We have two. We have one which is going to be a tabulated data file and one which is a uh, general oscillator. First, let's just try the tabulated one, see how, the, how that works out for us. Then I'll go and add another layer on top. And I, I pretty much expect this uh, photoresist to be pretty transparent in this range. So I'll choose a, sorry, I'll choose a, a Cauchy equation. And then I'm going to go ahead and I think this my target thickness for this was about 300 nanometers. I'll fit that. And I'll go ahead and fit this and this. And I'll just try and well, I'll generate it, see what it looks like. OK, but it doesn't quite doesn't quite like that. If I make this a little bit thicker, we'll shift it that way, so that seems a little more reasonable. And I'll just go ahead and fit and see what I get. OK. That's not great, but it's not terrible. And we can see, let's look at where it falls apart. So it's easier to see if we go and just deal with one at a time. Uh, all right, so, so it's kind of matching over here. Uh, it falls apart a little bit here, a little bit as it you know heads into the UV, and really it just kind of it crosses over it in a few different places. So this is interference that's related to the, the the difference in the optical properties between the film and the substrate. So if our properties of the substrate are are incorrect, it will affect whether or not our model for the properties of the film on top of it or stacks of films is correct. So one possibility of why this model isn't working is that our substrate is actually not going to be able to fit right. And that's because we use the tabulated data file. We don't know if the properties of our tungsten are identical to that in the file. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace this. 
I'm going to go back to metal, and I'm going to use this Lorentz oscillator based one. Now the Lorentz oscillator is basically a set of parameters where these different oscillators are like peak, they have an amplitude, they have a width, and they have a center and energy that they're centered around. And what they basically do is they explain the absorption of, uh, of light in that material due to things like free electrons, for example. A uh, Lorentz oscillator is very useful for metals because it models uh, the free electron absorption. So we've got all these different oscillators that have amplitudes and they have energies they're associated with. What I'm going to try to do to improve this fit is first I'm going to try and fit some of these some of these oscillators. I'm going to start by fitting the parameters of the oscillators that are the largest contributors, which would be these two are the biggest. I'll also plot this, which is just sort of a total up and down uh, energy offset. So I'll hit fit. What do I get? Well, I get a substantially better fit right away, just, just from fitting those two. Might be able to get a little bit better by fitting some of the next, you know, contributors. Uh, oh, we'll fit that. And fit, what do we get? Doesn't really change too much, so I don't really, I don't think I really need to continue doing that. I could even just, I could revert and just unfit these and fit and live with the eight. I could try to fit that and see if that improves it. That improves it a little bit. We could include roughness. That gives us that about halves our error. And we're looking at about 290, a little bit of roughness. And now we've fit this uh, oscillator to our substrate. So I'll go ahead, select all ranges, look at the entire set fit the entire thing, and now it looks like we have, a, we have a, a pretty nice fit which describes this. We can zoom in and see. It looks pretty good. Doesn't fall apart down here really. It fits in this range pretty well. And then this is a, a pretty good model to make sense of this. So the key here basically was to understand that your substrate plays an important role. And if you're, if you're not matching the substrate effectively with its optical properties, you may not be able to fit the film on top, even if the film on top is, is very straightforward and simple to model otherwise. All right, thanks. Look forward to video three.